Hello, everyone, and again, thank you for joining us online for our service this morning, and I hope that today's message will be an encouragement to you in your faith wherever you may be watching from. Before we look into God's Word, I want to take just a moment to express to uh, the Woodside Church family how much I miss each of you, and I'm wondering how you're all doing, and I hope you're doing well, and I look forward to the day uh, that we will be able to be uh, together again in person. I also want to say thank you to all of our healthcare and essential services workers uh, for um, being vulnerable at this time for, in a sense, encountering some risk as you serve during this time. So on behalf of the Woodside Church family, thank you uh, to you. Please know that I, as well as many others, are praying uh, for you and for your safety. During this coronavirus pandemic, uh, we are experiencing it differently. Uh, for some of us, we're hanging in there and we're making the best of it. And then for others of us, it's a real struggle and there's real stress. And wherever we are on the spectrum, we all long for a sense uh, of a return to normalcy. But the reality uh, that lies before us is that we will not be going back to our old normal, but we will be going forward to a new normal. Uh, and there are so many questions, so many unknowns as to what that looks like. There's uncertainty. Uh, will we socially be able to shake hands and hug one another again? Uh, economically, will we see a V curve or a U curve or an L curve? Uh, politically, will uh, our leaders close borders or will it be open? There's just so many questions to do uh, with this new normal that awaits us. And even on a personal level, we have questions. Uh, will I have a job or what will my job look like? Or uh, will my business survive? Or what about my, the employees and, and what should I do with the employees? Uh, and what's that going to look like in the days ahead? Or might it be to do with schooling, you know, college or university? city, what's that going to look like for me? And, and questions uh, to do with that. It might be with health. You know, what about my health or a loved one? And, and, and maybe that's more vulnerable to this virus. So we have so many questions and there's so many what ifs as we look ahead uh, to the future. And it's only normal to feel anxious, to feel stressed, to have fears. And today we're beginning a new series called Navigating the New Normal. And uh, today we'll be looking at uh, navigating the new normal with faith and then next week with hope and then the following week with love. God calls us that in the face of uncertainty, this new normal, that we would choose faith in him as we face our fears. That we would say, God, you are my confidence and I am looking to you, I am trusting you. And we ask the question, well, what does that faith look like going forward? And today I'd like to uh, have us look at uh, Abraham, who is a hero of the faith, who Paul refers to as the father of our faith, the father of those who believe. And we're gonna see in Abraham uh, some characteristics of real faith, that his confidence was in God, not in himself, that he had an authentic faith, not a counterfeit faith or a what's in it for me faith. So we're going to look at three characteristics that we see in his life, but that God wants to see in your life and my life as we move ahead. So if you have a Bible, I invite you to turn to Hebrews chapter 11, and I will be reading verses 8 through 10. Hebrews chapter 11, and the writer of Hebrews uh, writes this, by faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. Abraham had a relationship with God, and Abraham responded in faith to God. Now, a definition of faith uh, would be something like this. Faith is the confidence God is who he says he is and will do what he says he will do. 
that God has revealed to you and to me who he is through creation, through his word, and ultimately through Jesus Christ, that he is a God who is all-powerful, all-knowing, everywhere present, infinite, eternal, gracious, loving, faithful, that God is who he says he is, and God will do what he says he will do, that this God who calls us into a relationship with us speaks to us. He communicates with us. He promises us certain things. And faith is saying, God, I believe you. I trust you. My confidence is in you. So Abraham had his faith in God. So let's look at three characteristics of real faith. The first one is this. Real faith obeys even when we don't understand it. The writer of Hebrews says, By faith Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went. So if we go back 2,000 years to the time of Christ and another 2,000 years to the time of Abraham, that's where we find him. He's living in the land of Ur, which is just at the head of the Persian Gulf. It's in um, southern Iraq. That's the, the place today. And uh, we know uh, that that place 4,000 years ago uh, was a polytheistic city. There were many uh, temples and many gods. The patron god of Ur uh, was Nana, the moon god. Um, we also know that uh, the city of Ur was a center for education, for commerce, for business. And here is Abraham in this city worshiping false gods when the true God, through his grace, reveals himself to Abraham and calls Abraham to leave his country, to leave his people, and to go to a place that he would show Abraham. And in Genesis 12, we pick up the story of Abraham, and there we see a promise of God to Abraham. We know it as the Abrahamic covenant or the Abrahamic promise. And God says to Abraham, I will make you into a great nation. And through you, all peoples of the earth will be blessed. So God calls Abraham to leave this place and go to another place place. Now, Abraham, we know, did not have Google Maps uh, back in that day. He simply had God Maps. and But punching it in, he would say, okay, my, des my location is Ur, my destination, God, where is it? Uh, and you're going to show me where it is? Well, could you at least tell me how long the trip is going to take to get there? Abraham, I want you to trust me, to have faith in me. So we know that Abraham obeyed and went, and notice this, even though he did not know where he was going. So before Abraham had all the information, before he knew the location of this place, he obeyed and went. And what's the principle for us? The principle is this, going with God is more important than knowing all the details. And often it's in the going and often, the knowing is found in the going. So, for example, we at Woodside Church, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, believed that God was calling us to plant a church. And so we did our homework, and then we decided, yes, we will plant this church. But we did it, did it not knowing all the details. But we knew that God was going with us. And little by little, he's been showing us more of the details. In your new normal, there will be questions and what ifs and uncertainties. But the most important thing is not knowing what exactly is going to happen, but that you're going with God. Abraham knew that when he moved to this land of uncertainty, when he, he left and journeyed there, that God would be in that land, that God would meet him there. So the first uh, characteristic of real faith is that it obeys even when we don't understand it. The second characteristic of real faith is that it perseveres in the midst of difficulties. The writer of Hebrews says this in verse 9, By faith he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him 
of the same promise. After Abraham obeyed God and went to this new land, we know as the land of, of Israel today, and that, and that day it was the land of Canaan. After he journeyed there and arrived, he wasn't home free. The writer says when he was in that land, he had to live there as a stranger in a foreign land. Abraham got to see the land, but he didn't get to possess the land. In fact, he had to live in a tent. Back in Ur, we know that they, 4,000 years ago, had homes made of mud bricks and mud plaster. So he would have lived in a home, a, a permanent dwelling there. But here, he has to move around in a tent. And we see in Abraham's journey that he went to Shechem and he was then in Bethel and then down to the Negev desert and across to Egypt and back up to Bethel and over to Beersheba, that he was constantly living as a stranger in a foreign land. That Abraham, during this time, experienced difficulties and setbacks. Did he have a perfect faith? No, he didn't. There were times that he failed, that he struggled in his faith as he was in this land and around the land, but he had a persevering faith. He did not quit in his belief in God. His faith remained in God. Paul says in Romans 4 that Abraham grew in his faith, that he gave glory to God, and that he was fully persuaded that God was able to do what he had promised. He had a persevering faith. James, the brother of Jesus, speaks of a persevering faith in James chapter one, and he says that we're gonna face trials. And just a reminder today that we live in a fallen world. When the first man and the first woman sin, uh, for, sinned, sin entered into our experience. And as a result of that, we have trials, that sin held the door and inside walked sorrow and disappointment and illness and the coronavirus and death. All of this, these things walked in. Jesus said, we will have trouble, trials in this world. And James, the brother of Jesus, says that when we have these trials, the testing of our faith, that it produces something. It produces perseverance, a persevering faith. And James says to, to his readers and to us, let perseverance finish its work so that we will be mature and complete so that our faith will go, grow stronger, so that we will draw closer to God and be more complete. Now, I think if you're like me, I don't want to, in a sense, be complete. I want relief from my trial. But God has a different purpose in mind. He wants to grow our faith. And during the testing of our faith, during trials, we exercise our faith muscle. Three things or three truths about persevering faith First, persevering faith pleases God. In your relationship with God, every time you choose to obey God, every time you choose to express your faith in Him, it pleases Him. The writer of Hebrews in this chapter, chapter 11, says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. We like guarantees. We like God to give us all the details, but God doesn't do that. And he says, I want you to put your faith in me, to trust me. And when we do that, it pleases him. Secondly, persevering faith is used by God. He uses it. In the case of Abraham, he never saw the fulfillment of that promise. God said, I will make you, uh, Abraham, into a great nation. Abraham died without seeing the fulfillment of that promise, but we do know Abraham's offspring did possess the land, did become a nation, the nation of Israel. And Abraham as well, God uh, promised Abraham as well that he, that through him, all the peoples of the earth would be blessed. And 2,000 years after God made that promise to Abraham, Jesus was born. Jesus, our Messiah. And it was through the line of Abraham. Abraham had Isaac, who had Jacob, who had 12 sons, and one of the sons was Judah. And through that line, Jesus was born, the one who would live a sinless life and die on a cross for you and for me and was raised the third day, that through Jesus and his finished work on the cross, we can be restored to God. We can be saved from our sins and we can live forever with God in eternity. And that promise was fulfilled in Jesus. All peoples of the earth will be, saved, will be blessed through you, Abraham. And Abraham never got to see that fulfilled, but God used his faith. Similarly today, God uses our faith.
Uh, sometimes when we have the testing of our faith, we experience trials, we call out to God and corporately we are to be walking with other Christians as well and together we're calling out to God for healing, for miracles and when he responds with a yes, we celebrate uh, God in his answer. But sometimes God chooses to answer with a no. And it's in that place, in that time, when a person who prays and prays and believes and believes, and in spite of the no, continues to say, God, I will persevere in my faith, that God can use that as well. I know in my life, God has used the faith of a number of people who have persevered in their faith. I've mentioned before, just how much I appreciate our seniors at Woodside and many of our seniors that I've known in the past, they've gone to, to, to be with the Lord. Uh, and there's so many stories that I've heard, but I just wanna share one story uh, about a, a elderly man at Woodside. Uh, a number of years ago during the week, uh, this man was sitting in the foyer uh, at Woodside and uh, I knew him as a, a man who loved Jesus, who had a peace about him, who when you saw him would have this uh, uh, pleasant smile. And, uh, but I didn't know him that well. And so I went uh, this day and I sat down next to him in the foyer and I asked him if he would share just a little of his story. And he shared with me how he lost his first wife, he lost his second wife, how he lost a daughter, how he had a health complication, how he had a setback with his job and the story uh, just sharing what he had gone through. And I don't remember when I got up from the chair to walk back to my office what I was thinking, but I do remember what I felt. I was so inspired in my faith that here was a man who had a strong faith, a persevering faith, and God used his faith in my life. My life. And there are others that God has used and is using today. Today at Woodside, there are some of our folks that are going through a real testing of their faith, but they're choosing to persevere in it, and God is using it. So please know that when you're exercising your faith, you may not see this side of eternity, how God is using it, but there might be someone in your family, someone at work, a neighbor, a friend, and, and there's coming a day where you'll be able to see where God used your faith uh, to further his purposes. The third thing about persevering faith is that God honors persevering faith faith. God is no man's debtor and he has gone on record and saying that when you uh, trust him, when you express your faith in him, that he will reward you for it. James says it this way in James chapter 1, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. That God has gone on record as saying that there's coming a day that those who hang in there with their faith, that God will reward their faith. They will receive the crown of life. Now, there's five crowns listed in Scripture. This is one of the crowns. What's the crown of life? We don't know. Uh, the word for crown in the Greek uh, means reward. It means wreath. In the day of James, it was uh, the runner who uh, trained and worked hard and, and ran the race and won the race, and he received this crown. And so we know that God will reward those who love him, who persevere in their faith. So Abraham struggled in his faith. Sometimes he failed, but he got back up and he didn't shortchange the process of, of that testing producing perseverance. He didn't bail out on it. He continued to trust God. But that leads us to the question, how could he do it? Why would Abraham do that? Why would he not go back to Ur and live in a home? Why live in a tent? Why live surrounded by people that were strangers? What was it that caused him to keep going and to keep obeying God? Well, we see that, and that's our third point. Real faith looks forward to eternity with God. Abraham was living for something beyond this life, beyond the here and now. Abraham knew he was a part of a bigger story. Abraham wasn't living for uh, his little story, just for the here and now. He was surrounded just like we're surrounded by people who are living just for the here and now, not Abraham. He was living for the story of God. He was obeying and playing his part in God's story. The writer of Hebrews says this in verse 10, for he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect 
and builder is God. Abraham was looking to where this place that God would show him to Canaan, uh, to Canaan, but he was looking beyond that to eternity with God. And the writer describes that place, that city where heaven, the abode of God, and earth, the abode of man, where they merge together, the new heaven and the new earth that uh, John talks about in the book of Revelation. But he tells us that it's a city with foundations. And the word foundations has the idea of fixed, permanent. That Abraham was looking beyond his tent and he was looking to his permanent dwelling with God, a city that had foundations, a city whose architect and builder is God. In this city, the architect, the city planner, the, the um, site manager, the contractor is God, that he's designing it. And it is a wonderful, beautiful place. And Abraham, by faith, was looking forward to that place as he journeyed through life. The Apostle Paul says, uh, in Romans 4, that Abraham grew in his faith that he gave glory to God because he was fully persuaded that God could do what he promised to do. So for us today, as we are entering into a new normal, now we don't have a direct uh, correlation with Abraham's story, but we do have a, 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 a connection in this, that we are leaving our old normal. And God, who's in control of all events, is calling us into a new normal. And he's calling you and he's calling me to face our fears with faith, to choose faith as we enter into this new normal. That we would say to God, God, I choose to obey you even though I don't know how things are going to play out. I have these questions. I have these what ifs. I feel stressed. I feel anxious. I've got these fears. But God, I want to obey you. And God, I want to persevere in my faith. God, I see this as an opportunity for you to strengthen me. And it's hard and I don't like it, but God, I'm choosing uh, to persevere in my faith. And God, I'm declaring to you today that I'm going to look past this new normal to the day when I will see Jesus face to face. And friends, for all of us together, we will never regret expressing our faith in God. So I invite you today to take maybe just a step back to reframe what you're going through, to regain some perspective and make that declaration that you will choose faith in the midst of your fears. So I'm going to invite you just to take a few moments and uh, maybe you have some kids around and it's noisy, but even in that uh, place, would you just take a few moments now and declare to God, um, that you will obey him, that you will have that persevering faith, and that by his grace you will continue to look forward to seeing Jesus one day.